за. What's going on, guys? Greg, good to hear from you. Gary, I mailed your uh, stuff off the other day last week. You should be getting it uh, tomorrow, I think is what the lady said at the post office. Good evening, Juan. Ravi, how are you? Chico, I got you in here, Clara. Some new names in here, guys. I haven't, uh, some of these are new. Doing good. I don't know if, uh, I know most of you guys follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm gonna go through tonight. I'm gonna give it like two more minutes before I start digging into this chart. I'm gonna go through exactly how this trade came about and why I took it. Um, how to, and I'm also, uh, Joel, He'll probably jump on here in a little bit. Uh, Joel Hansen is usually on there. He's a uh, very good friend too. Um, he was like, man, how do you see all that crap on your chart? So I'm going to um, show you guys how to make it where you can see a little bit better. Rochelle, good to see you. Or here he is, whichever way you want to call it. But yeah, I'm going to go through this entire uh, setup today, of how I did it. And then after I run through this, I don't think it'll take me the full hour. I'm going to try to go through pretty quick. Excuse me. Um, and then I'll open it up to questions. Uh, anything you guys want on, I, mean, I don't care what it is, you just ask me. And if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know it. And if I do, I will uh, do my best to answer it for you or, uh, or at least point you in the right direction if I don't know it. All right, guys, I'm gonna give two more minutes. We've got a couple more people pop in. One more minute. As soon as it goes to 7.03, we're gonna go live. All right. Can everybody see my trading view screen okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Is everyone asleep tonight? <laughs> I'll just mess with you guys. Just so everybody knows, I got in trouble by the HOA because they haven't mowed the weeds. Somebody posted a video of a like four foot long um, cotton mouth, like came out of the water ponds up to their back door and climbed up their door around the handle and was like looking in the house. And I have my Bella, my dog. So I went and weed eated the entire drainage pond and I got a warning letter from the HOA that I'm not, uh, we're not allowed to touch the common areas. So uh, I'm on, uh, no, Rochelle, uh, regular uh, ES. I mean, it's the same, the same numbers that uh, it's on there. But all right, guys, this, I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna look at this video thing over here, so I'll look at your, no, Trevor, I did not have class last week. I was, uh, there was a wildfire here in Santa Rosa Beach that burned up. I thought it was 100 homes, but I think they said it was only 33. There was over 100 homes damaged. Uh, I literally was looking at two houses, pulled up to the stop sign, looked left. This was at like 5 maybe, 515, 530. Looked right, and the flames were like, the whole height of the pine trees, which, you know, a good 50, 30, 50 feet high. And they crossed the road. They completely wiped out the model home of this neighborhood um, that was like two football fields from me. 
But I spent the next hour and a half plus uh, running door to door in all the neighborhoods behind there uh, because the winds were blowing that way. Um, I lived in Bastrop, Texas when they lost like, I think it was 1600 homes in 2010 or 11. And um, it's not my first wildfire that I've been through. So um, I went door to door. So we didn't have a meeting last week. I apologize. I was trying to save lives. I did save this little old lady. Uh, everything burnt around her house, but her house, but I banged on her door. She was probably, I'd say 84 years old at least. And I was like, ma'am, you got to go. And she's like, I just cooked dinner. I'm like, well, you could cook dinner tomorrow when you're alive. You can't cook dinner when you're dead. You got to get out. But, uh, but she made it out. They're okay. Yes, I, Trevor, I am. I'm going to go over channels right now. I'm going to leave this uh, channel you see right here. This was the fourth wave pullback uh, on the five minute, if I remember right. I got to uh, re redo it. Okay, earlier earlier in the day, when I came in, I go to an hour, hour chart from, and I can't turn off the ding sound, so you guys are gonna have to learn to live with it. Let me turn off the volume off here. Let me turn off bits, and oh, wait, wait for now. All right, I like to look at a 240 to see what's going on on a contract, uh, just to see where we're at and what's going on. Now, 8.30 is, well, that next one is nine, so you, somewhere in there. So I'm gonna shrink the chart up and I'm going to draw a channel you go up here and hit your top left where it says trend line, go down to the bottom for regression trend, you click it. And then I have my 240 channels uh, set to different colors, but I'm gonna do one that's like this red. Um, actually, I'm gonna do, a, a, I saved one in a white channel. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't pop your eyes as bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back. I mean, this is clear back to March 20th. This is a nice low point and we've been in a steady up uh, going there. So it doesn't matter if you click on this candle, the one next to it or the one next to it, it automatically calculates um, the numbers for it. And I'll show you that here in a second. But you just click the bottom there. And then obviously this is where we're at right now. This is where you would snap it. Uh, but in the morning at the last one you have is 5 a.m., which is this one. So I'm going to snap that there. And there's your 240 channel. All right, we've respected it pretty decent. If you right-click that channel and hit settings, you'll have, I like high lows closed divided by three. I really, um, I really like that a lot, unless it's the fourth wave pullback, and then I just use close. Uh, on it and that there's my 240 so now I drop down to an hour you just scroll back put it back up and you can have some more trading opportunities inside of there and then you can go down I got I'm gonna go down to a five minute on here I know some people will cringe on a five minute, but let me tell you why I got on there. If you look at my post that I had earlier, seven hours ago. All right, we had uh, grading the trade here. Hey guys. And let me see if it'll open it up. There we go. So this was at 9.45-ish, I think, somewhere right around there. So 9.45, let's go back here to, I got on our roller coaster membership here, it has, I think, what is it, 21, 22 symbols on there. And that is right here. 
here's it. It's live right here. But this is the one that I had this morning. And I got a alert on, this was a five minute chart. It was also on a three minute a little bit earlier um, as well. But it had an ES short at 10.05 a.m. at 2042.75. All right. So like right now, it's a different number now. But this is at 10.05. Okay. So we go over here, five minute chart, which is where it gave us the alert on. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take this channel off just so you can see it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the wave count. Now we know from this channel that I just drew a little bit ago, that is the 240 longer term, uh, you know, back to, well, I think that was longer term, hold on. Let me go further back. There we go. If you ever want to get back to where you're at, guys, this little uh, loopity loop deal will bring you back to where you're at. So this is a longer term uh, channel here of where we're at, but I want to isolate on a low. So a low or a high. So I'm going to go backwards. Today's the 13th. I'm going to go back, back. And I like to isolate when the um, 8.30 hits, which is right around in here. I'm gonna isolate from this uh, point right here. And let me blow this up so you can see it. That is this, the low candle right here. Cause everything else is way, way, way up there. This is down here. This is at right before midnight, last night, I guess, eight, nine o'clock. Theoretically, um, you can go over here to 8.30. A lot of times uh, I'll just isolate from the 8.30 open or six, seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, but I'm gonna pick this one right here. And if you look over here on the bar count number, it is 98.54. So we're gonna turn on L8 wave, go to inputs, 98.54, click okay. And there's our move. All right. Now, if you add on, let me see here. Don't, I think, let me see here, plot background. I don't want to mess this up. That's the smallest one there, smallest one there. Yeah. I don't want to mess those up there. Labels. You need the labels because you got to have your wave count that's on there. But I'm going to show you on adding bits on. Bits does add a lot more to your screen. But one of the things you can do is right click those lines and you can go in here, uh, for instance, on this. Uh, peach color here for mid-range. It's set at this bar here. You can click the thin line. You can see up here where it changes. I click it thicker, it gets that big. I can go down to the thin, and then I can also take this down and lighten it up so that you know it's there, and you know that color is, uh, you know it's an important, it's mid-range or whatever it is that you want. So same way with yesterday's close, I can take it down, lighten it up, and you can see it right here. It goes lighter. Uh, Trevor, I'll show you here in just a second. I think I'll answer it, uh, but ask me again here in a little bit. Yesterday's low, same way. I can bring it down here to half. Yesterday's high, same way, a smaller one, bring it down. And now those aren't as uh, big. And that yellow line now, here's your slow. I can take that down. I want to keep it bigger than the, um, the other ones, but I do want to lower it down. Uh, it is a major line. 
so I want to kind of keep it kind of bright. Uh, my two that are important to me is the cyan line, which is going to be this one up here. Your medium, these are your point of control dots. So I'm going to lighten those up. It takes a lot off that screen. And then your, I want to keep my cyan line uh, bright like that. Now you can take off your labels. I, I leave mine off. Um, but it does give you your bits entry, but that's also this green line right here. Um, and that's, so that label is there. All you do is go down here and uncheck labels and it takes off yesterday's close, mid and high. I know, I know what's, that's what those things mean. So I take them off so you can just uncheck them. Okay, now if you just hit okay, the next time you go and you add this on to another chart, it's, uh, it's gonna go back to those default labels. So what you can do is click this box here that says default, save as default, and now, now be careful, don't be changing stuff all up in here. Uh, you can always delete it and then put it back on uh, if you mess it up. Yeah, save. That should give me a smaller box. Nope. So that cleaned the screen up some that uh, for bits. Now I will tell you, I leave bits off until after I have what's going on going on. So here at, let's see, our alert was at 10.05, was that correct? Yes, 10.05. All right, so we're gonna go over to 10.05. All right, I already isolated off this low right here, which was 98.54. 10 o'clock comes rolling around at 10.05. We already had, we already had a fifth wave move that actually hit and went up here, uh, then turned in an ABC corrective. And then it ended up doing a successful fifth wave down here. Now. At 10.05, which is this bar right here, okay? Without this channel on here, I would have no idea what was going on. Uh, this is where we were playing around in here. And then we came out of that channel, which was the first time it's been out of it in a while. Popped back up, hit the center of it, and then came back out. All right, what interests me in this is and why I took this, is we were below the 6.4 moving average, and look where this, the lower 6.4 moving average line is. It's right on the freaking channel line. Went below it. Down here, your higher time frame, uh, confluence between the higher time frames is short, all right? Then your oscillator went from uh, a little crowned a little bit in green, just starting in red, going down. Your stochastic crossed over down here as well for going down. So you had a lot of uh, positive things to go down. So this, this, I was actually before the alert came in, I was in this over here. So 10.05 is this candle right here. So it goes ding, ding, ding. And I look at it and I'm like, all right, 2842.75 is what it says. Uh, trailing stop, uh, let's see, 2822. So 2842 was 75-ish is right there. All right. So the entry, it gave us the alert here on this candle right here. I'm not taking it because it went down and pulled back. I'm not taking it until it breaks the low of where that was at. Now, I was already in it over here, came back, let's see, what was it, 51, came down in here. Um, I think I pulled 20 some ticks out of it and got out. Then came back down and I got back in it again here. All right. It's uh, blue skies. Now, on my video earlier, I said, and you can watch it on my Twitter feed, I said, typically, these, even though this fifth wave did not hit on this one here, 
and was violated, this will still act as support or, uh, yeah, as support or resistance, uh, whichever way you want to look at it, coming back up or not. And sure enough, we came down. And if you look, we hit it and bounced back up, then pierced all the way. And look at the bottom of that candle right here at 1040. Literally was the bottom of the fifth wave target. And then we came back up and then kept on going down. Uh, really good move. Now, let me show you adding on roller coaster. That, that was just using a bits, but here's the, here is now roller coaster um, explaining that move, why I took it without roller coaster on it. Oh, I was already in it because of that channel below the six, four moving average, higher time frame set to go short, oscillators crowning over to go down and stochastic crossover. I am like, dude, those are all the things that you need to go down. All right, now for confirmation that I know I'm really in the right place is when this thing goes off and says, you need to go short at this number. All right, I already have it. Uh, I was already in it. So add on now, roller coaster, and there was that alert at 10.05, okay? I never take the first one uh, out of it. Sometimes it bites me and it takes off, but I would say more times than others, it pulls back up into this uh, zone and then comes back out. Typically, in my experience, it and it's one of the things I like to do is go back and look at the how it's performed, and Paul calls that getting in the groove. How many times did it pull back up into that area and how many times did it just pop out and just rock it like a, you know, no tomorrow. This one actually did really good. It only pulled in one candle and then the third candle it popped out. And that, and then I don't like to go, I call it a stair step. This is where the first line was at the low of that candle. I don't like to get in until I'm at the low of that one uh, on there. So this was a nice roller coaster move back. Well, typically the third wave turns, the third wave when it uh, stops out, which is where it did right here, is typically where the fourth wave pullback in is. okay? So I'm gonna turn off roller coaster here for a second. And we are gonna draw a channel on, and I have it saved down here as wave four pullback channel. You can go to my uh, trading view profile. It's JDub Tick Trader. You can't miss my bald head on there and smiling face. Um, I have videos in here on how to customize trading view um, and save these kind of things. Things that you do on a regular basis, you can save them as a default, and you don't have to go in there and customize everything all the time. So I'm going to hit Wave Four pullback. You do a channel once it paints the four. Okay, now you may have to remove your channel several times, which this one only did it, technically it, uh, I drew it here and then it pulled down and then it came back up again. So I had to redo it again. But you just click the bottom of the three and the top of the four. All right, then right click that and it should be set to close, which I told you my high low close divided by three on my other channels, but on my fourth wave pullbacks, uh, I use close, okay? I like to be outside of that channel line before I take it, and I wanna be uh, outside of this blue and red 6.4 moving average before I take that fifth wave down. Now this one did pull back up. Uh, let me erase this right here. All right, so now you have your fourth wave pullback. Your long-term uh, higher time frame charts are saying short. Your 535 oscillator, we are going to do a Fibonacci, and I have it saved down here as 9140 Fib, and you can, like same thing with on it, just go to my um, Trading View channel, and I have one on there, how to set your settings and how to save them as a default. Um, you're gonna go from that fourth wave you're going to go from zero 
down to the high of wave three, which is right here. I'm pointing with my finger and you guys can't see me pointing. Uh, but drop that line at the high of wave three. I like to see a crown, but this is a nice move down. So I was comfortable uh, with this. But you wanna, uh, I like to see a little bit of a crown, like if it was opposite um, of a little bit. But we didn't crown, but we also didn't go past 140. So on a pot, uh, counting your rules of what you're gonna do, you've already had an amazing roller coaster uh, wave three down. Okay, you've taken advantage of it. Now, a lot of times when the wave three gets painted, and we have this roller coaster, let me turn it on here. I'm not gonna wait for it to go up to the wave four because I know we're in an Elliott wave. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna get out and keep the extra ticks for profit on there and then get back in over here. I'm not gonna give up uh, 93 to 15. I, I'm not giving up 22 points, 88 plus ticks, uh, no. Not doing that. I'm getting out of there. As soon as you got a second green candle that goes to the top of that one, I'm gone on it. But grading this trade, you had a nice third wave down. Okay. We've had a fourth wave pullback. Then uh, typically seven to 10 candles. Now, on your lower time frames, you may get more, uh, but seven to 10 is abnormal. So let's count on here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You're only one over, you're still good. So we did not go past the red. We stopped, we ticked into the red, but we didn't violate it. 85%, uh, typically 85% success ratio on the green, 80 in the yellow, 75 in the red. Um, oil and gold uh, will typically violate that red and then come back down. Uh, I wouldn't trade oil right now. I'd, I ain't messing with oil at all. But very, very, well, same way here, just hit that button there to bring it back. So we're going through what good roller coaster wave down. Fourth wave pullback uh, was good. 11 candles, that's good. We, uh, didn't violate the green, yellow, and red, that's good. You're getting short, you want to get out, you want to go out below that 6 4 moving average. Now, uh, I was already, uh, I can't remember where I got out of here and I got back in again. And then I ended up getting in a Russell one later, but this thing just kept on going. Russell was awesome today. Uh, it was good. So you, you come out of there, you out of your 6-4 moving average. Um, in this 2806, what did you go up to 13? Yeah, you went 8 eight points out, you went 32 ticks out of there, probably got stopped out of there, uh, and then come back again and dipped out of here. But we hit the fifth wave uh, on this one. The key is being in it earlier and not playing in this choppiness. That's the only thing that happens in these smaller time frames is you tend to get some chop in here that will get you out. The key is getting in early on these uh, roller coaster moves now, you may end up giving up some profit uh, if you stop yourself out when it pulls back before it goes back down. Um, this was on, if I remember right, might have been Russell. This was on like five different time frames um, for an Elliott wave. So that was good. So we, we've got everything on here that we needed to take this trade. Now on the other one, let me look for, let me look for, hold on just a second guys. Let me, uh, let me find my other post. That's that one. I'm on my desktop, I'm trying to find my RTY. I don't think, I don't think I screenshot the RTY one today, guys. No, I didn't. Uh, but let me, 
would like to share my screen. Um, and it's too late. Uh, this thing's already updated on RTY, so I can't show you on here. But let me let me show you what happened on it today. This one, let me go up to, I think it was 10 or 15, 15, there we go. 15 minute, this one was rock and rolling also, just like, um, oh wait a minute, hold on. Let me go back, where's the 13th? 10 minutes, there we go. 10 minute, fifth wave move, I took this one today also. Uh, I didn't post anything on it. And let me see your channel. Same way with this one. So it had a nice roller coaster move the day before. We opened, uh, came down all the way at the close, opened up, still kept coming down. And we kind of really just went sideways. I mean, we had a long fourth wave pullback. Uh, and it hit it several times moving up here. So let's isolate off this one. I'm going to turn off roller coaster so you can see. All right. So my low point of wave three is right here. And my wave four high, it didn't violate the red. It came darn close to it. So it's right there. So we're going to hit our channel. We're going to hit wave five pullback. We're going to click the bottom of that three, the top of the four, and there you go. This one, when I say this one was textbook, this one was textbook. Uh, of, I, I love this one. Uh, so now we've done a channel. Excuse me. You do not, you want to go short after you're outside of that channel and after you're uh, below the 6.4 moving average. Now, more than likely, you probably would have taken this right here. Um, by the time I got to it, it was, I mean, we were over in here. It was the same time frame that the ES was going down. So I have a different chart set up that I have ES, uh, it's ES, NASDAQ, Dow, and Russell. And then I have individual pages that I go around and draw this crap on. Uh, but that way I can see, I have a workspace where I can see what's going on on all four because uh, a lot of times, like the Russell will lag behind the other ones. So you can jump on to a Russell, uh, you know, NASDAQ takes off, and the next thing you know, the Dow does and the EF does. And um, you kind of get a, like a, I call it your thumb on the heartbeat of the, of the market of what's doing that day. Um, so, all right, so we draw this channel here. We're going below. And... The uh, isolating the wave count on this one, hold on. I just got seen your message on there. The wave, I'm gonna, Trevor, I'm gonna be honest with you, the, uh, the Elliott wave on a higher time frame, like um, let's say one hour, four hours daily, you're, the chances of you getting chopped up and knocked out before it before it actually hits is way too high. So um, that's why you you're looking at a higher time frame to get your trend in your direction, but you're going to the lower time frames to take uh, less risky moves on these. Because see, I'm on a 10 minute channel now. 10 minutes is kind of pushing it uh, for me on because a lot can happen in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Three bars is a half hour. There's a lot of stuff. News can come out in a half hour. On a five-minute chart, you know what I mean? You've got five, six bars uh, in there. Not, not a whole lot happens uh, in there. But on this one, if you were going to isolate the one is right. I can look at something, and if you have – <clears throat> if you have the roller coaster on here, I know this is probably a three. I can just look at this and say this is a one, two, three, and then the four is going to end up somewhere in here. So if you're going to isolate over here, 
you just pick either the one uh, on that that I think that that's the one, or I just go a couple candles over and pick one. Um, this one here is 9901. Let me go back over here. 9901. Um, it just had a low low bar there, so we're gonna go roller coaster. Or excuse me, not roller coaster. We're gonna go to Elliott Wave. Inputs 9901. Click OK. Takes seven to ten seconds, and it really it just changed a little bit right here. So all right, so we're isolated. Uh, why the count? I'm not sure, Trevor. What you mean? Yes, the low to the uh, for the channel, you want to touch the low of the, the either the low or the high, whichever way it is. If the um, if the Elliott wave is going the opposite direction, um, then you're going to want to touch the three at the top and then the four at the bottom. You just go the low of the lower high of the three and the lower higher of the four, and you touch it. The on Trading View, it will automatically snap it for you. Now I will tell you, I tried helping somebody the other day, and I don't know if they're on here or not, uh, with Ninja Trader, and I about went mentally insane um, trying to figure it out. Uh, same way with uh, Thinkorswim and TradeStation. TradeStation, I was going crazy on that one the other day too, trying to show somebody. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm like, let me just go to Trading View and show you how to do it. Click, 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 and it was done. So. On here, we have this fourth wave pullback. Now this was gonna keep moving as it went up. So let's, I, let's be realistic here so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna turn off roller coaster. And obviously this painted a wave four, and I hope you guys can see this well. Let me move those out of the way. This little button right here, you can move whatever's on your screen you can make it hide it and then drop it back down. Uh, the only thing is if you do that, your wave count, you can't see it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but I'm gonna pop that up here. So your wave four went here first and then came out. So let's do our, it remembers the last channel that you drew, which was that wave four pullback. So we're gonna do the wave three and then we're gonna do the high of that one right there. Okay. Now your, uh, so we're outside of the channel. Once we're outside of the 6.4 moving average, so your entry theoretically would be somewhere around 90, 98 on this NASDAQ one here. But I look down and let's look at this crown. We're gonna do a Fibonacci. We're gonna do a 91.40. Here's your wave three. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna drag this down to the top of the wave three. The fourth wave crown did not violate the 140, so you had a positive there. But this right here was your false breakout uh, stochastic crossover. Right here, it, it was back up high again when it came out. It did give you a short signal here that it went down green went to yellow went to red probably would have taken that right there at 9096 now once that takes off i mean it went down to 73 so i mean it uh it moved quite a bit you're going to move your stop loss up i mean you already have it on there when you set the trade but you're going to move the stop loss up would have stopped you out with probably me when it first starts i put like a one tick profit where basically it just covers uh, my fees and if it runs, it runs, if it doesn't, it doesn't, but I don't have a losing trade. Uh, so now it pulls back up. The wave four stays the same. It doesn't, no, does not go higher here. So the four stays the same. Then it comes up to here, touches this one. So what you do is you delete your channel. You go back, click the low and now now you dropped it to this because the four would have painted right here. Now you're not going to get a short until here. 
this met all the requirements. Now you hit this one here. If you look, it's right on the, it went green, yellow, 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 red. All right, now we're going to delete this Fibonacci. We're gonna do it again. It's gonna, should remember the last time I touched it. We're gonna to go to zero and then go to our wave four or excuse me, wave three high. Now the wave four has moved. The first one, it didn't do it. Pulled back down, came back up. Here's your four. We did not violate, so that's good. Now we pop off right here. False uh, breakout. When you're thinking about going shorts, telling no, 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 no. We cross over the A. We are the oscillator crowns. Everything's looking pretty good. Now let me turn on bits on here. Now that I've made those lines smaller, they're harder, whoa, they're harder to see. You put them on there. Bits crossed over right there as well to go short. So I have a bits signal. We're below the channel line. We have a red, the oscillator's good. The stochastic's good. The false breakout went away. We have everything to go short. You take the trade 9193, somewhere in there. Like I said, you put your stop loss behind it. It ended up pulling back. Probably wouldn't have stopped you out there. Uh, and then did come all the way back out. Now, once we break the green, yellow, and red box, I move my stop loss to the bottom of the box because then you're protecting some profit if you get some whipping around. And sure enough, what did it do? Pulls all the way back up. All right, now this channel is probably, this channel is not gonna change uh, after we drew it on that other one, but we're gonna draw it again because the wave four moved from here to here. So we go back, Click your wave three low to your wave four. And look, the channel, actually it dropped down a little bit. So now you're not gonna take this until you below that channel line, you got a bits indicator to go, the cyan cross over the yellow right at the channel line, which I like it when bits uh, coincides with a channel line. You could, I, it's like more confirmation to me than uh, another thing. Um, and then this was uh, a great deal. Roller coaster popped up at the same time for the fifth wave move. So it doesn't always happen like that for the fifth wave. So you like really know this fifth wave is going good. Um, same way, with, I, I don't have to redraw the uh, 535 oscillator here. Uh, we know the 140, it didn't crown outside of it. It's good. Yes, bias, uh, well, bias was red. If you uh, look over here, it went red, but it went back to green. And then as we came out, it was red. And the next, if you look down here, you had your uh, stochastic crossed over. Uh, your crown was good. We went to a red. Uh, I, I like it when it crowns like this and goes down. It typically moves uh, like a rocket. And notice how um, the uh, crowning back over here, it's like we did get the other one we looked at on ES. It didn't crown. Uh, it still performed, but it wasn't like a big old, you know, monster runner. Um, this one moved. Uh, I mean, it did go on ES farther on, but I'm, the one we looked at uh, was kind of small. The roller coaster move kept on going. But this one took us for the fifth wave move. Uh, I'm going to take off roller coaster so you can see this a little bit better. We take off and we go down. We cross through those levels of yesterday's low, all that stuff. It's dropping down. Your purple point of control dots, you can't hardly see them because I lighten them up so much. Uh, we're way below those we just blast right through the fifth wave target. Next candle opens, stays in it, goes below it. Now, I don't know about you, I'm not the smartest uh, guy in the world or sharpest knife in the block. I'm gonna move my stop loss 
to the bottom of that fifth wave target and let it take me out. And it did, came back, went straight to where that stop loss was, came back up, down, barely dipped out, back up, tested it again, did dip a little lower later on. This is where people get chopped up uh, like no tomorrow. Now there is, this was a bits move out of here. If you look at this, we crossed over from being uh, higher time frames uh, and confluence of going short, then went, uh, doesn't know what it's gonna do to go back up. There was a signal right there to go long if you were trying to scalp something off there um, out of it. But that is how you use that. Now let's take uh, 6A, I don't ever trade 6A, so let's go over here and look. Let's see if we can find. 6A. All right, let me turn off bits. Let me turn off affiliate wave. Let's go to four hour. I'm gonna draw a channel. This is how I uh, this is how I grade everything. If I'm gonna do it, um, I'm gonna do the white channel. I'm gonna go from here to here, okay? Kind of at the bottom of the channel of a 240 right now. All right, now I'm gonna go down to an hour. On trading view, it's really nice to just zoom out and zoom back in, and that same 240 channel is there, but you have hour candles inside of it, same way with a half hour. Uh, now sometimes if you don't go back far enough, uh, on the like five or 10 minute time frames, you got to take this and drag manually drag it to get it to show up. Uh, so with these, let's turn on roller coaster. There's some nice moves inside of this. So you're looking at a higher time frame like you're supposed to. And let me click this. Looking at a higher time frame and taking opportunities inside of it. Now, I don't like me personally, I don't like to take a roller coaster move towards the bottom of a channel line. Now, it may break out. Yes, Trevor, I did well today. Uh, the I don't like to take a fifth wave or a roller coaster move towards a channel line. Now, if it opens right on a channel line, let me see if I can find one here, like this right here. If it opens on the center line, then it's kind of like confirmation for me. It doesn't do it always, but it's usually the going to the other side of the channel, which we came darn close to it. Uh, and same way with coming in from, if we've been outside of the channel line at the very top, if we get a nice roller coaster entry coming down, I like to take those. Now, I, don't like 30 minute uh, an hour roller coaster ones. Um, sometimes it'll help me uh, stay in a trade longer, for instance, like let's just go over here to right now. Now, oh, so just so I don't forget, let me see what time it is, 48. If you guys wanna stay late tonight, I'll stay later if you want. Um, so this was a three minute alert on, 6A long at 19.45, which I think is right now. So let's go over to three minutes. So I've looked at this. Now three minutes, it's gonna be hard to see this channel going out of here. I don't know if it'll even pick it up to be honest with you. It takes a lot of work to get a three minute channel to show up because there's so many candles. You just got to keep dragging back, dragging back, dragging back. Nope. Not going to happen. Then you just click that rewind button and you go back. I can go up here and click the 30 minute, move back, and then I know that channel line is at 64.38. So we'll go back down to the three. My Apple mouse, guys, I don't know why, 64.38 was the channel bottom. 
So 64, 38. Let's just draw uh, a line real quick, horizontal line, 64, 38. All right. So that orange line right there, we know is the channel bottom. So as this thing's coming down, it's at an angle. So it's somewhere right around, right around in there. So we're getting an alert to go long, possible long. Now, this is where you wanna check it first, all right? Take your three minutes, zoom backwards. How many times has it been accurate? Is it in the groove, as Paul says? Is it in the groove? No, not in the groove. Had a little, little winner there, not, uh, not much. No, 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 no. Little one, yes, no. Really nice one there. Uh, no, no. Decent one, decent one, decent one. This is not in the groove. So guess what? Even though this has alerted for a long, now it's saying 64.56 uh, for your entry. So we're right at 64.56. That's that green line right here. Even though this thing is saying ding, 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 go, you still got to have some common sense to look at and see where we're at. I personally think we're gonna come back down and touch this 6438 range. We're gonna bounce off that channel on a higher time frame. It also, now we could be changing direction because the red has gone to yellow. The oscillator has gone to its first green uh, bar right here. Uh, your false breakout for going short has gone away and you've got a green arrow that stochastic has crossed over. So there are some positive things to this, but I want, I'm not going to take it that uh, it's just not where I want to be. Now that you don't have to rule the whole thing out. Let's go up here and change this to five minutes. Let's see what it has. 6A, 1905, 64.47. Yeah, that one was for a short. So you got conflicting ones. One Now, that doesn't mean that the direction is not going to change. So four minutes is saying this. Three minutes is saying go up. Five minutes is saying go down. I'm not going to take it. You got conflicting deals. Plus, I can go back and look. Little, but no, no, little one, no, 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 not really. I mean, it's a little one. Uh, decent, good one, good one, no, no. Good one, no. It, 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 this isn't in the groove that uh, on this time frame. Let's go up to 10 minutes. Let's see what, and you just hit that little rewind arrow. Uh, 10 minutes. Looking pretty nice on 10 minutes. You look at this. Now, look at the 10 minute one that's been performing. Now, this one down here, we know this 6438 is the bottom of the channel. All right. If it's going to break, it's going to break and take off below the channel line uh, for a run. This one already ran out and it stopped pretty darn close to the channel uh, bottom. And we, the channel is going sideways. So, this 38. Uh, line uh, that we put on here, I think it's 38, that we put on here, uh, that's not going to be accurate because it's going this way. Uh, 10 minutes might pick up that channel. I think I can get it to pull up. Maybe. Nope. It's too far. But this 10 minute roller coaster has been pretty damn good. If you look here, even though this one, this one never activated on the 10 minute, so you never even got in it. So I don't count that as a bad one because it never started and then reversed. So you have one badass one and it never went like horribly negative on you. Uh, like I told you, when it first starts 
I wait until the second time it comes back out. It typically comes out, comes back and retest it. Um, this one retested twice coming out of there, but I don't trade 6A, so I have no idea. What is it per tick? $10 per pip. How many is that per penny? Yeah, so well, yeah, man, that's quite a bit. Uh, so that's a, that's a really good move um, from there to there. Same way with this one. Now, if you look, even if you took this, depends on your risk management on your account, how much you have in there. Um, typically, most people recommend 1%, no more than 1% uh, per trade, 5% uh, in a day for a loss. Uh, you know, that you got to look at your own account and make your own decisions on that of what you're going to do. None of these stopped out. Yes, they did go negative. It's one of those that you just got to, you got to look back and look and see if it's been in the group. These have all done very, very well. I mean, every single one of these that now this one never activated until here, but it took off and went, I mean, quite a bit out of there. This one here really, really well. I like the ones that have the trailing stop. Now on trading view, our tra the trailing stop is just that red line integrated there between the two shades of green. Um, they don't let us put the hash marks in the programming. I actually have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, sorry guys, I got an eyelash in my eye. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, trading view uh, live with them and I've got my list of all my stuff that I'm going to go over. Dot D charts is number one on my list. Share bars, um, some other stuff on there. Uh, but this 10 minute, 10 minute one has been like really popping. Up. I mean, look at all these. They're, when they uh, produce the stop out line, it's usually a really good trade. And it's just one stop out line after another, after another, after another. Look at this. Boom, boom. Winner, 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 winner. This 10 minute time frame is really good. Winner, winner. Small, uh, I mean, as soon as it took off, you're going to move your stop loss to the entry. That's what I moved my stop loss to the entry. If it comes back, stops me out. So what? I made one tick, you know what I mean? And then I can take another shot at it if it comes back out again. But if it does what it did here, where it came out, stopped you out, and then took off and went the other way, you didn't lose anything. Uh, same way with this one. Came out once. I told you I wait till the second time. It came out. It ran down. You put your stop loss at one tick. If it continues on and becomes a runner, great. If it doesn't, you're a one tick wonder, uh, but you didn't lose a tick at, uh, or 10 or 15 or 20. So this time frame, this 10 minute time frame has been very good. You don't have to scroll over the chart to hit your rewind button. Uh, so I would, um, I would watch six, uh, what is this, An Australian dollar. I'd watch it uh, on a 10 minute time frame. Now you might take an entry on one of these five minute ones that uh, sometimes these will pop up for an earlier entry. Um, you may get a nice big long move on a two minute entry. You're not necessarily you're gonna take it, but it's showing you that the momentum is building and then it's on a three minute and then it's on a four minute and then it's on a five minute um, to get you in that groove. But all right, let's see, what do we got in here? Take the roller coaster at the bottom of the channel. I don't, uh, the reason why I don't take the roller coaster at the bottom of the channel is, I mean, all right, look at this, look at this channel. So since March 18th until May 13th, so basically two months, how many times did we bust out of this channel once? And that was right here, all right? That's it. We haven't busted out any, we haven't busted out of it anywhere else. So if I get a roller coaster thing here now, could that be uh, the end of that trend and we're going down? Possibly, but you know what? I'm not gonna roll the dice when I have two months of data that says, you know, everyone tells you look at long-term charts. You gotta frame your chart on a 240 or an hour uh, to go in here and see what's going on. Uh, 
what, what is the overall trend and what has it been respecting? Now, I will tell you, uh, this is a 30-minute chart inside of a 240. So I do like a one hour. Now, this is, um, this is a one hour. Uh, let me change the color of this real quick. Let's do, we'll change it to red. That way we know it's one hour. Uh, now you have more opportunities in here. I've been using roller coaster more with the channels than uh, if I get, if I dive deeper in, then I get into Elliott Wave and uh, it's harder to find the Elliott Wave when everything's going, and it's going really, really fast during the day. Especially if you don't get up early, you need to get up earlier and frame your charts and do your homework and put your channels in and have all this stuff done before the market opens. Now, will you adjust things like that fourth wave pullback channel? Yes. Uh, but you don't need to um, re-isolate again. Now, if things have gone crazy nuts and we've been all over the board, uh, then you might re-isolate again, especially on the smaller time frames. Uh, you can, but typically you don't. Um, but if you look at this on a one hour uh, channel, okay, we've been good from three, well, how was that 318? Yeah, 318, that, that's still two months worth of data, guys. Uh, the hourly and the 240 are literally almost the same of where we're at. Now, you're just going to find on roller coaster more opportunities. Now, let's say, let's just isolate off this low over here. 11197. So let's turn on 11. One nine seven, one 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 nine seven. I don't know if this thing kicks us off, guys, after an hour or not. I don't think it does. It still says we're live. All right. So here we go. Here is a. Let me turn on bits, and then move this stuff off the screen. Let's zoom in here. Yeah. This is multiple days on a one hour chart. I don't like taking one hour uh, fifth wave moves, just like I told you before. Look at how much this thing chopped back and forth when it met the requirements to go long, like right here. Uh, it met the requirements here and pull back, pull back. It's just too much. That's why, you know, when people see us pull, pulling a five minute Elliott wave. It's not that you're trying to trade a five minute time frame. You're looking at the higher time frames. You're basing all your decisions off the higher time frame. You're just knocking it down to a more manageable, less risky entry um, off of it that if it goes the wrong way, it's not that many uh, ticks negative on you. When, uh, so, okay, so you got it. So when would you take a trade in the channel? So let's, um, all right, we have, now I wouldn't take this fifth wave out of here because we're in the middle of this channel. All right, so you all can see, and uh, by the way, if you wanna make this bigger, you just click this little box right here and it will take whatever indicators you have at the bottom. And that way you can have a, a better view of it. The, all right, so I know the longer terms here. Well, this is saying a fifth wave right here. I don't take a trade in the middle of these channels, period. Zero, zilch, none ya. Do I, do sometimes, do they work? Yes. Do I get, pardon my French, my ass burned more times than none? Yes. Uh, so my rules for me, I don't take a trade in the middle of the channel, period. Zero, zilch, none. And Look right here, I was right, all right, but look down here, we crossed, made a lower fourth wave down here, because right here we just touched the channel, came back up, dipped down, touched it, dipped back down. We did cross over the channel there. Let's look right here. 
everything met the requirements to go there. That uh, if you did, I was gonna say, I, I don't take a 60 minute long, uh, 60 minute fifth wave on there. Bits got you in actually right here. Let me turn off roller coaster so you can see this. Bits gave you an entry right here to go long. Came back, pulled back below, and then cyan crossed the yellow, yellow again for the move up uh, on there. And you have all your stuff is lined up also. I just don't like taking them on that. Uh, so let's go down to five minute. Pull that channel up. Come on. I'm going to ask TradingView tomorrow if there's a way to manually just click so that a higher time frame will show up for your uh, trades. It's just too hard, guys. On uh, 15 minute has been my favorite uh, time frame here lately. Uh, just a lot of stuff goes on on 15 minutes. See how we're close to the bottom, and and we actually touched. Um, on there at one time we touched that same number but it may end up being over here somewhere overnight you know what i mean before it's just too big of moves uh but i know that channel line is there so and we've been in since for two weeks we've been in the lower channel all right we've never touched the bottom of the channel we've just floated around i went up here and now we have a lower high, or a lower high and a lower high, and a lower low and a lower low. So I don't know, this thing's probably gonna come back up in this range and then come back down again. Now, will it take off and go up? I have no idea, but I'm not gonna take this trade. So, all right guys, we're towards the end. We ran over a little bit. Um, let me know what you guys want to look at real quick uh, that I can finish up here. I got some. Uh, Trevor, I, usually it's about one to three days, um, one to two days, our tech guy that puts it onto the website. Um, uh, and just so you all know, I'm going to, um, this roller coaster, two things. We have an update to the website this weekend. So if you have some issues logging in, that is why they're, uh, I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not a computer engineer guy, but some kind of socket plug in something. I have no idea what it means. I just push the button and do what I'm supposed to. Um, but if you guys want um, this, it's 197 a month for the futures. Uh, roller coaster program here. I mean, it runs on all these different time frames, so you can kind of see what's going on on your long term. Uh, as you can see, you only need one trade to pay for this thing for the whole month. You can make it dark where it's easier to see. You can pop it out and shrink the box down so that it is, um, you can have, you know, two, three, and five uh, opened up. And then you can have a longer term one uh, also where you can see maybe getting chopped around, but it's chopping up as it's going and you can see it on a 60 minute that it's going up. Thanks Trevor. I, I, real, I mean, guys, I, you, most of you guys on here, if you're not new, you guys know me, I will zoom private zoom meeting with you. I mean, uh, sometimes it's two hours. Uh, you know, late at night, early, not real early in the morning because I don't like getting up. I'm not an early morning riser. But I did get up at three something twice this week. It wore me out uh, trying to trade the uh, European open and stuff there. Uh, Gary, I am heading, I will tell you though, I, I do have time tomorrow, but I am heading out of town uh, to Atlanta and uh, Gonna hang out with uh, John Garland for a day, and then I'm going to Kansas City for a week and visit family and uh, just hang out there. And I gotta get away from the beach. I gotta get away from here. I gotta have a vacation away from the water. <laughs> yeah.
It's uh, just private message me, Gary. Uh, I think you got my number. You can text me on there. Dead on it. All right, guys. I am going to close this up. Um, anytime after, hold on, my meeting with them is at noon, 12.30. After one o'clock, but um, just get a hold of me then and we'll figure it out because uh, I don't know what will happen between 8 a.m. and 12.30. So we'll figure out a time. All right, guys, have a good night, man. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, if you need uh, a demo of anything, let me know. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.